making things green, you know, um, is much more complex than people think it is. And the you know the immediate solution that leaps to everybody's you know everybody's mind to make green buildings is to stuff with eco technology. You use photovoltaics, or you know put some recycling systems in it, and building out you know sort of low energy systems. But that is only part of the environment issue. You know, making th buildings green has to do with the ecology of the of the locality. Trying to make buildings um, imitate ecosystems. You see, I believe that is the crunch. This is what, not the crunch, but I, I believe that this is the approach that we must adopt. That we should try and design our built environment like human-made ecosystems. You know, by imitating the properties and structure and functions of ecosystems. For instance, in nature, ecosystems. Uh, have no waste. If you look at ecosystems, you find that the, the, in nature, there's only one source of energy, which is from the sun. And so, um, to me, green buildings is not just about eco-technology. Uh, well, eco-technology, useful experiments, has to do with imitating ecological systems, making our built environment imitate the natural environment in as much as possible. So trying to design to a locality is to try and look at the existing native dwellings of buildings for that particular locality, and, le take, and, 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 and learn lessons from them, and try and redefine and rebuild in a contemporary sort of way, in a modern sort of way, using what we learn from traditional architecture. Dubai is, is, uh, is a very special phenomenon, you know, and, and it, um, it actively went out to make itself into, into a unique um, phenomenon. And I'm not sure it's a good thing, but it's, you know, it's beginning to be um, become a model to be imitated by other of the you know, other of the other cities in in the, in the Gulf. Um, so Abu Dhabi wants to, probably wants to be like another Dubai and and so forth. Um, I believe that probably within the next five to ten years, uh, there'll be lots of buildings in Dubai which will not be occupied. They're, you know, both commercial buildings and and residential buildings. Because where are the people coming from to occupy these buildings or to buy them? You know, the, the international market can only soak up so much of it. Because, for instance, you know, um, 30 to 50 percent of the energy that's used in the country um, are, are in buildings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 60 percent of the waste that goes to the landfill, they say, come from the building industry. So, you know, buildings actually, you know, have a significant impact. But it's not the only uh, component in the ecological equation. And so the, um, the financial crunch will come. It is not so much uh, the green issue. But the, the financial, the commercial issue will, will start to be felt, you know. But, but making the world green can never, ever be justified commercially. It is an ethical issue. So it has to start with people themselves. They have to be educated to, you know, to say that, yes, we want to be green because, it, you know, it's, it is good for us. It is for, you know, good for our future generations. And, 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 and not because for commercial reasons, you know, we want to make green. Industry has to become green. Mm -hmm. Once industry becomes green, you know, then other things follow, the buildings, the you know, transportation, you know, the whole processing within, you know, within these businesses. So we should start with businesses. Mm -hmm. and, once, you know, and that businessmen are the first people we need to persuade uh, to make what they do green. How can we live and carry on our lives and our businesses and our lifestyles um, without being too dependent on, on, the, uh, on fossil fuels? I think the, the, the answer is not in hybrid cars because that's, that's, trying to, um, that's trying to solve the problem at the micro level. We really have to rethink the whole transportation issue. Um, for instance, studies have shown that um, the, the greatest use of cars in household is not going to work. It's not sending children to school, but actually in shopping. If, I, if we can find some way that we can do our shopping in a much more organized and a much more um, less dependable way on, on cars, then uh, you know we're beginning to 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 have a low energy uh, mobility, and then intensification of mobility or intensification of buildings should really be uh, where the um, transportation hubs are, but also the transportation implications of people getting to the building and leaving the building and going from work to the building and leaving uh, and sort of you know going home after work. That has to be considered. Well, biochromatic design is basically designing to, uh, with the climate of the locality. So, if you're a cold climate, then you should work with a cold climate. If you if you are temperate climate, you should work with a temperate climate. It's basically trying to optimize and make the best use of the climate locality um, to reduce the need for um, the use of fossil fuels or use of energy for for environmental reasons. We should also balance the. Uh, 
the, the, the mass of the building, the inorganic mass with more organic mass. Because in nature, uh, your ecological system has a balance of both biotic components and abiotic components. The trouble with a building like this that you and I are in right now, that everything in this building is inorganic except you and the bugs. If you keep building this way, then the whole world becomes inorganic.